Hello, thank you for being the first woman on Green Gorilla Conversations. Yeah. So, Katie, tell me a bit about you. In- I'm the Regional Sustainability Manager for Scotland for a contractor called Graham Construction. Um, I've been in this role for just over a year. Uh, prior to that, I was mainly sort of consultancy side. I have worked with a couple of other contractors, and I actually started my career at BRE, as you well know. know I think <laughs> you interviewed me I um, many, many years ago. But you've been quite active in the free marina in uh, in this time, and you've gone through a lot of assessments. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think um, when I last checked at the number of assessments I've been involved in, not necessarily assessor, but involved in either as an AP or an independent consultant. I've just topped 300. Oh my um, goodness. So I think I deserve a badge for that. <laughs> Green has been a huge part of my career um, and it has been a very positive influence on the UK construction industry and beyond the UK. But I think, you know, obviously being a UK started um, assessment methodology, it's it's pushed our construction industry probably than a lot of people realize perhaps that leads into my main frustration with it in the fact that the UK construction industry as a whole from client first idea of a building right the way through to the people operating it now have a much wider and a much more in-depth understanding of sustainability and Bream represents quite a small block of it perhaps Bream doesn't reflect that wider approach anymore and it's it's quite rigid and due to that you end up with sort of head brick wall situations where you're asking for something so arbitrary it's almost embarrassing Um, and then on the flip side you're asking for something that is way beyond what we do at the moment. What is the best advice you can give to someone who is new to it to actually take advantage of it and and make the most out of it? I think the key, especially for somebody entering sustainability and and wants to be a BREAM assessor or to work with BREAM, is to remember that the training that you're given at BRE is brilliant, but that is very much your baseline. Use that to build onto it and talk to people. Don't just assume that because you've been to the training and you know how the criteria works, that that is the reality of it because clients have different aspirations. Your contractor will have a different set of rules that they have to work to. Your architect will be working on something. They might be passionate about passive house. You know, your M&Es might be passionate about something different. Take your time to get to know your project. Don't go into a meeting and reel off Bream because your role as an assessor is a translator. It's not to mark boxes and collect pieces of paper and emails. Your role is to take what your team is doing on the project, translate that into brain, not the other way around. So I guess the key to that is is listen and talk and try and build your experience across the board. A lot of assessors tend to start with M&E organisations, which I personally think is a really good place to start because so much of BREAM is about M&E mm. that it will give you a good baseline. But from there speak to your architects on the project, speak to your client and actually understand what they want out of BREAM and you'll find that the assessment methods, the assessment itself is so much easier if you know where everyone's coming from and in in brutal honesty you're more likely to make friends than you are if you just go in there and tell them to do BREAM because they will politely tell you they're not going to do it. You, You won't find that people will buy into it if you can't sort of promote it to them too and there are a huge, huge number of benefits to doing BREAM there's no denying despite the frustrations that some of us have it it really is good you know and done properly with a with an assessor who is prepared to listen and prepared to work with both BRE and the project team you can get a really really good project and there's a there's a sense of satisfaction in doing that let's talk about clients then because sometimes they don't seem to be interested well so it, I suppose part of your role as an assessor as a brim AP is also to convince them of the advantages so do you have a tactic for that by and large clients over i'd say the last four years we've seen a big change in the industry and clients now are looking for sustainability it used to be a bit of a used to to push it and show them certificates and things like that Mm -hmm. um you can have this and a plaque and and all sorts but but there is certainly in some senses it's got easier 
Um, with clients, the, the biggest problem is managing expectation. And when it comes to Bream, it's a case of managing what they perceive Bream to be and the reality of it, because there are costs associated with Bream, particularly when you're going for excellent or higher. And the, the best way to get a client on board with Bream is to, for me anyway, look at the credits individually and you know, there are some in there that have got some really big wins, particularly in the energy section. You can save your client money. You have to spend money, but in the long run, and you know, if you're looking at, for example, an office block that's going to be rented out, if you've got your building that is performing better in terms of energy efficiency and consumption than your competitors, you've got a fantastic selling point there because nobody wants to pay for electricity, let's face it. I think we've moved away from the, the days of green roofs and sort of green washing, dare I say, and it's become a lot more matter of fact. Sustainability in general is a lot more brutal perhaps than it used to be. Bat boxes, bird boxes, they're fantastic, but they aren't going to, they're not going to win your client anything. And for a client, they want to make money. That's why we do it. Well, you know, unless you're looking at public sector, but in which case that it's making a hospital that is going to have, you know, shorter waiting times, better patient health. You can sell that research back to your client to try and get them to embrace things like larger windows and, you know, sort of daylight. It's a sort of a sales pitch, if you like. And it depends very much on the stakeholder you're speaking to, yeah, depending absolutely. on whether the client has a vested interest in the long term of the building yeah. versus those that want to sell it immediately. I think it's very difficult for a new, uh, new assessors, new sustainability consultants, because they get sold to just the technical part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And all of this you learn, unfortunately, the hard way once you start working in the industry. It's definitely a steep learning curve. And you, uh, to be perfectly honest, I, most new assessors that I come across uh, at one point or another, we've embarrassed ourselves because we've gone into a meeting and assumed that we know absolutely everything there is to know about Bream and this, that and the other. And there will always be somebody in there who's got a different point of view, who knows a different way of doing it. Let's look at what do you think uh, will happen next. I actually think it's a really exciting time. I think with everything going on in the world, um, you know, it's every every week there's something new in the spotlight. Obviously, plastic bags at the moment. Um, I've noticed even on Facebook the number of sort of uh, zero waste groups and things like that. Are, they're springing up everywhere, and I think that sustainability, rather than us being um, perhaps a relatively small group of very enthusiastic individuals it's sort of filtering down through and that's brilliant but because of that I feel like the industry is going to change quite dramatically um previously um the key to sort of sustainability was considered to be sort of innovation mm -hmm. uh, well if you look at Green, you know you've got innovation credits in it and innovation yeah. should be encouraged but I think what we're seeing now is that people are taking a step back so rather than looking at an innovative way to fix a problem, we're going right back to the root of that problem. And I think we're going to see that more in all areas of the industry. People actually going, this is a very different approach that would eliminate the problem in the first place. I think in terms of careers, sustainability can be one of the most rewarding careers you can have. I mean, like every day, say, for, you know, I go on a site and I see something that 10 years ago we were pushing for. Mm. And... It's such a good industry to get your teeth into because it's always changing. It will, it will never rest. Sustainability will keep changing. Once we've got over this goal, there'll be another one. And it's full of really brilliant people as well. Some of the conversations that I get to have for work are just fantastic. And there's so many different ways that you can go into sustainability. It doesn't have to be construction. Every, every single sector now is, is honing in on sustainability. And I think it's, it's a really good time to get into it. You know, if you, if you want this sort of career and you're driven, you just keep driving yourself. You know, there will always be an opportunity for you. So just keep trying it all. You know, that's how, that's what I do. If you like what you just saw, you can go to thegreengorilla.co.uk for more ideas, more resources, more videos, and of course, the Green Gorilla courses.